The Coastal Management Project aims to enable our Tasman Bay, Te Tai o Aorere and Golden Bay Mohua communities to work towards long-term adaptive planning for sea level rise and coastal hazards. Tasman's coastline spans over 700 kilometres of open coast and estuary shorelines. The geography ranges from rocky and coastal cliff landforms to dunes, sandy beaches and sand spits. Tasman's coastal communities will continue to experience the impacts of coastal hazards and sea level rise. In our district, more recent examples is ex-tropical cyclone Fahey that hit our community on the 1st of February in 2018 and caused significant damage along our coastline as well as other areas around New Zealand. Coastal hazards will increase with climate change. As, as, the, as the air temperatures warm up, it contains more water, so storms have, I guess, more rainfall in them. And so we can expect these storms to be more frequent. As sea levels rise, erosion rates will increase. And during storm tides, the sea and the waves will penetrate further inland, affecting more and more properties. Communities can respond to sea level rise and coastal hazards in a number of ways. First, an important part is to understand the hazard where it is and what sort of impact might occur. Some of the key impacts we found through the coastal risk assessment include residential houses affected in the Multueka. Around most of the coast, there was large rural areas, horticultural areas, again in Rewaka, Multueka, as well as the Waimea in Richmond, and industrial land in the lower Queen Street, Richmond. The roads connecting all these places and the infrastructure supplying the services to people. And around the whole district, there's reserve land and parks and areas that people like to access. Under a two metre sea level rise, about 50% of this open space and recreational zone is potentially impacted. Some of the risks to our buildings and infrastructure in the district include direct damage from storms and rising sea levels. Other impacts will be ability to get managed stormwater and discharge stormwater at the coast. We may have ponding and accumulation during heavy rainfalls. Our risk assessment shows for the Motueka area, there's about 3,300 buildings potentially affected in a two metre sea level rise. That compares with about five and a half thousand across the whole district. The coastal areas of Tasman have been used for a long time and hence there's a number of archaeological sites. We've identified about 350 sites that have potentially impacted in a two metre sea level rise. There's likely to be other sites that Council's not aware of. Council's open space and recreational land is spread right around the district. However, a lot of it is at the coast. Abel Tasman National Park is one of the most visited national parks in the country. People not just from Tasman, but all over New Zealand and the world enjoy visiting its beautiful beaches and bush and these could be vulnerable in rising sea levels. There are a mix of options for responding to sea level rise and coastal hazards, with all options having both challenges and opportunities, broadly sitting under four categories, accommodate, protect, avoid, and retreat. The protect group of options seeks to hold the line by protecting coastal areas from sea using soft protection and or hard protection. The avoid options mainly use land use planning measures to stop people and assets from being put in harm's way. It seeks to avoid further intensification of existing built areas or the development of new sites in low-lying coastal locations. This can be thought of as a let's not make the situation worse approach. The accommodate group of options enables continued use of coastal land but existing development is adjusted or new development is designed to anticipate coastal hazards. Examples include raising ground or floor levels of buildings or requiring relocatable houses. Retreat option involves moving people, assets and activities away from the coast. It can take place across a range of scales from individual properties, such as moving a building further back on a property section to relocating whole communities and infrastructure, or enabling ecological migration of coastal species and habitats. With each of these options, there will be a range of challenges. A key one will be the costs and who pays. There will be broader issues for society and potential inequalities. And some options will also have a range of negative environmental impacts, including end wall effects with sea walls and the loss of the high tide beach. As we respond to sea level rise, there's an opportunity to use new technologies and build more resilient communities. 
by coming together to look at what we know about sea level rise and coastal hazards in Tasman and the options we have for responding, we'll be better prepared for future decision making. The decisions we make over the coming years will affect generations to come, shaping the places that we live, work and value.